Hi guys, welcome back. Bang is here again. Today we're gonna to cover some really basic firebox maintenance and things you should be doing along the way throughout the season. So let's get into it. So we've had this firebox for about eight years and it's been a really good unit. It's a Calora firebox or a slow combustion stove or a wood stove, whatever you wanna call it. There's many names for these things. These are great. This is how we do almost all our heating throughout the year. And unless we have the, we put the reverse cycle air conditioner on if we haven't been home or we haven't had a chance on this stuff, but pretty much for three to four months a year, this thing runs every night and just, we, we light it up, we run it through the night uh, and that's enough to keep your house warm. So one of the main things and one of the main questions I get is, how often should you empty the ash out of your firebox? Well, there's no hard and fast rule. However, in general, you should, there's this is the height of the front of the fireplace here. You can see it's starting to get above the height of, above the height of the of the front of the firebox on its level. Now, this is more than I would let it go normally. As a general rule, you want about 25 millimeters of ash in the bottom of your firebox, or about an inch, or I usually say about the thickness of the heat tiles on the side or the bottom. Right now, it's. Again, it don't, there's no yes, right or wrong, but that's generally a good guide. You saw there I was measuring this with a stick. I just usually measure this with a stick, as you saw before. I put the stick in, down through the ash, and it's about 50 mil. Now this is higher or more ash than I would normally let it build up to, but I was doing it for the demonstration purposes. I let it go about another week, and here we are. It's starting to get too full. Okay, so. We, we were out all day today. I'll let this fire go right out and it's completely cold. So the plan is very, very simple. And this, this may seem obvious to some people, but to others, you know, this might be the first time you ever owned a fire uh, or a slow combustion stove. So here's the tips. We've got old, old Stumpy here, which was an old shovel head that I put a handle, just a handle on like this. You can just use just about anything to do this, okay? But better, best off made to do steel. And some nights when I think it's getting full, I just take a scoop out and take it outside, even if there's coals and embers, okay? Just don't put it in your whiz bin. You can see here that was starting to get hard packed. That's what, that's what you don't want, okay? So we're just bringing that out, putting that in here. And I, yeah, it's just, it might seem simple, but this is, this is what we do. So then I just get a stick and I free up all what's in the corners and all whatever else is in there, right down in front here. Okay, I'm gonna take another scoop out. I still think it's a little bit too high. I'm just being careful not to ram that into the bricks to damage the bricks. Okay. So I just shake all that down, level it out. There we go. So you'd be surprised how much more room in the firebox now there is in there. And that's important from an airflow perspective. This is a this is a 10, roughly a 10 kilowatt unit, as they say. It's not a big fireplace, but it's it's really the perfect size for this house. And you, a lot of these have the holes in the back allow the air to come through and recirculate and reburn once it gets its flow going, the convection going right. And the, the less and less room you have, one, you just have less room to burn, less oxygen, less room, but you're, you're disrupting that, that flow that these have that, that's specially designed. So that's something to keep in mind if you're letting it go and you're thinking, oh, the wood's it's just not taking off, the wood's not going right. Uh, that can be one of the main reasons. You can, see, you can see here how much more room there is now in the firebox. And that is about, you know, it, it, it's about 25 mil deeper an inch deep. That I'd say, I just maintained it that throughout the life of the window. Another key maintenance item is to make sure that this, the door seal is seated correctly and sealing properly. So it seals here on this outside part of the, of the firebox here on the, on, on the opening. And you can really generally tell that it's sealing and it's in good shape because there's a, there's a, a corresponding mark. This is a woven fiberglass packing here all the way around. And you, know, you can take that out. Don't, don't, don't be afraid of that stuff, but just, just be in mind that that's that needs to be seated in there all the way around. So you can see here the corresponding mark being made by the opening of the box. 
and it's all seated in nicely. It's all, none of it's, none of it's hanging out, none of it's all floppy. So what you wanna really do is just make sure that's intact. And then I tend to just give it a good old brush, right? And just make sure there's no sticks or anything caught in it. Right, don't get too crazy. And, and really, that's it for that part of the door. And you also wanna check that your door is sealing tightly but not too tightly. That's this little knob here, this little latch that comes on, on, on the door latch. Nothing worse than a fire door that's not, that your fire's not gonna operate correctly if the fire door, it's not, it's not sealed properly on, your, on the gasket here. So just, you know, just making sure that that, you'll, you'll see here, as I push down, the door doesn't wobble in it and it seats properly. So that's, that's, really, that's really the minimum standard that you want there for your, for your firebox door. You can adjust this by winding in on this bolt here. Just gently hold that and wind that in slightly and you'll adjust, you'll be able to adjust that. But this one's, this one's set um, really quite nice. Then we just give it a general, general sweep down at the front here. So nothing special. Just make sure we get rid of all this stuff. We'll sweep all this up. Make sure that seal's got something, make sure that seal's got something good to sit on. And I also check to make sure that all the fire bricks are fairly well intact. It's okay for some of these to crack. It's not ideal, but if the bricks are cracked but they're still, in, they're still located together, th then they'll be fine. So just if your bricks start to degrade and start to crumble and fall away, and they're not protecting the steel at the lower part of the firebox, it's a good idea to get down to your local supplier and, and you know places like Barbecues, Galore and Bunnings, and all of the hardware shop, they've got all that stuff. The other thing to make sure of is that your dampener's working correctly. So what you'll find is if you look up in here on a lot of fireplaces, that this gate that this dampener is really just restricting the airflow into the firebox. So just, just have a look up in here. Sometimes you can get a torch and just make sure that, that they're unobstructed and that it's operating correctly. I had a uh, mate with a fireplace once and it just, it just could never get going quite right. Or the dampener was stuck that it would move but it wouldn't come to the full open position. So just check up in here that that's operating. You can see up in here where the dampener is operating. As I push that in, in for on, fire on, and you can see that all those holes are free and open and unobstructed. And then when I go dampener out for put the fire out, you can see there that it closes off that almost entire, and that's where it's meant to finish, that, that, that's operating properly. So of course we wanna watch the fire and have it look nice. So we clean the glass, and I do that quite regularly because I like to watch the fire and it looks nice and all that sort of thing and presents well. So this is my main tip. When these little green scourers, and you can, I wouldn't recommend using a wire wool scourer or a steel wool scourer on your glass, but these little rough pads or any sort of that uh, fibrousy type uh, scouring, uh, these scouring things from the kitchen, when these are about to get thrown out, I save them and I clean the glass with them. So you're obviously not gonna use that on your food again, but that, this, then I'll go and chuck it out. So all I do is get some spray and wipe or other cleaning solution. You can, all, you can even do this with water, but I just find that spray and wipe gives it a bit of a better, uh, is, is a bit better off. So I literally just spray that on there. Then I run this around and just literally scare the window. And it's, yeah, it's a, if, you do it, if you do it often, it doesn't take very long. So this is literally, I just get in all the corners like that. And this gets off all that baked on fire. You know, it's like the oils from the wood and all that type of stuff. So, and being square and that, this, this gets in the corners. And I'll literally just wipe it off with the paper towel. Dry it off like any other window. So there you have it. Basic tips for fireplace maintenance. I know this might sound simple to some people and it might be pretty basic, but if, you, if you've never owned a fireplace before or operated one, I hope this helped you. A couple of key things to remember. Every couple of weeks or when it gets above about 50 mil or to the height of the front of your fireplace, just before then, take a few scoops out, get it back down to that 25 mil, that nice little base. That'll help protect the bottom of your fire and give you a, give you a, a, good, a good platform to work off. Check your dampener, check the seal on your door and clean your door so your fire looks nice. Stay warm.